Hey, I'm standing here on the Port Republic battlefield in beautiful Rockingham County, Virginia. This battle was fought June 9th, 1862, 155 years ago today, and we're standing on the very field. It's just amazing to be able to stand on a field that 155 years ago, you can see how peaceful it is now, certainly was not peaceful then. As a matter of fact, some of the bloodiest uh, fighting is going to occur right here on this hill. This hill behind me is known as the Coaling. Uh, that is going to be the Federal Artillery Battery that is placed up there. And that's the, that is a strong, strong position to have rifled artillery. But the battle is not just going to be here. If we go back up 340, south on 340 toward the town of Grottos, make a right on the Jackson's Way, you follow Jackson's Way down, you are following the route of Jackson's men. Uh, that will actually take you down the middle of the battlefield. So what's going to happen at 5 a.m., Jackson's going to move out from the town of Port Republic. He's going to have his troops advancing to attack the Federals and push them off the coaling and push them back toward Conrad's store, present-day Elkton. Because of the Federal artillery being there, um, it's very good. Federal artillery was good throughout the whole war. They are going to bog down the Confederates out here in the fields. The Confederates are going to have to go into a little bit of hiding because they can't advance. Um, and Jackson is going to have to call on Yule, who fought at Cross Keys the day before, to come across the river and help push the Federals out. Yule is going to do this. He's going to advance his men from Cross Keys down here. He's going to try to get them across the river as quick as he can to help Jackson. This is going to include the Louisiana Tigers. Now, the Tigers are a very famous uh, brigade. They are... Um, in my opinion, Jackson's kind of shock troops, hammer troops, whatever you want to call them. Um, these guys like to fight. They lived for fighting. Um, so they are going to be tasked with taking the coaling. As Jackson's troops are bogged down and the Tigers come in, the Tigers are going to move through the woods behind uh, the camera here. And they're going to come in to attack the coaling. At that same time, Winder, who has been bogged down, is going to renew his attacks. And both sides are going to suffer heavy casualties as the fight goes back and forth. It's going to be absolutely just horrible to be on this field this day 155 years ago. But eventually, after the Tigers come up, they're going to hit that federal battery. They're going to be repulsed. They're going to hit it a second time, but the Federals are going to come back and stop them and keep them off the hill. However, it's said that the, the throats of horses and things like that were were done. They, they slit the throats um, so to keep the Federals from pulling the guns off. On the third try, the Louisiana Tigers are finally going to sweep up over the hill, and they're going to come through that wood line, and they're going to hit the federal guns and they're going to take the federal guns and they're going to take about five guns off of that hill that is going to make this federal position untenable uh with that that's going to end the battle of port republic it's a long battle it's not a uh it's not as short as this video is but it's a long battle it keeps the uh federals from joining uh together uh, as yule's final troops come across they're going to burn the river bridges to keep Fremont on the other side. Uh, Fremont is going to come down to the river and he's just going to start shelling the field. Um, and he's actually throwing shells onto his own troops. Uh, that's also This battle is also going to be the end of the Shenandoah Valley Campaign in 1862. Jackson has uh, defeated several armies and he is now ready to move across the mountains toward Richmond to assist Robert E. Lee in the Seven Days Campaign. Poor Republic uh, Battlefield is a beautiful battlefield. Like I said, if you ride down Jackson's Way, it'll take you right down the middle of the battlefield. You can also turn left here um, off of 340 on the Linwood Road. That'll take you down to another portion of it. You can see what's called Flank Circle. Um, and also uh, several houses, Civil War era houses. Uh, if you turn right here at Orbank Road, you come to the coaling. As you can see, there's a nice walking path that takes you up to the top of the hill. Uh, the house at the top was not here during the war, uh, but it was built later. But there's several signs here that talk about the battle. Um, also, you can just see how they have the fence up and some flags. And on the other side is a Virginia historical marker. I uh, hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about the Battle of Port Republic and the final battle of Jackson's Shenandoah Valley campaign. Um, I enjoy 
talking about this. So if you like what I do, please look me up on Facebook at Aaron Seaver. And in parentheses, it should say Aaron Civil War Travels. Or you can look me up on YouTube at Aaron Civil War Travels. Also, please donate to Battlefields. Let's try to keep history alive um, and keep these battlefields maintained. It's uh, it's just awesome to be able to, hear, to come out here um, on the 155th anniversary of the Battle of Port Republic. Thank you for watching.